More on Apple's new USB-C pencil, and what is Goldman Sachs' problem anyway? This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by the Mac Voices Slack, available to all patrons of Mac Voices. Sign up today at patreon.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. The panel concludes our discussion of the new Apple USB-C Pencil with some tips on how you should go about selecting which Apple Pencil model that will work for you. Then we take a look at the apparently strained relationship between Apple and Goldman Sachs and the Apple Card. Let's go back and let the panel do the talking. I'm going to second-guess Apple just a little bit here, or ask you to. If you were going to drop the price of the of an Apple Pencil, would you have given up the inductive charging, or would you have given up some of the other features that are still included in this one and just made it a bit more of a stylus that that charges? Because, Brittany, you, you specifically said, and I thought it was very interesting that you said that you yours um, yours is always charged and always right there and ready. And that's something that you potentially wouldn't have with this pencil if you had been a, a, a Jim Ray and had it in his bag and dug through it and then suddenly decided he needed it and it's not charged. I never got an iPad with Apple Pencil support until they had the inductive charging because I knew it would be lost somewhere and it wouldn't be charged when I needed it. And I just I just didn't trust me to hang on to it or have it charged. Um, and the induction makes all the difference. Now, I'm also spoiled by the other features now. I probably actually couldn't use Chucks because I'm spoiled now. But on <laughs> paper, all of my needs are met, would be met by the one Chuck mentioned. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody else feel like they might have given up another feature for what other features uh, does it have you could exchange? Because because they kept well, the double tap, right? No, no, oh, it doesn't have that either. Okay, no. Yeah, well, I don't know what features it has. One could exchange because if it doesn't attach to the side, it also doesn't uh, inductively charge. Yeah, yeah. So the the things you give up. Uh, compared to Apple Pencil 2, when you go to Apple Pencil, the new generation, um, you you lose inductive charging, you lose pressure sensitivity, you lose the uh, the tap gestures on the stylus. That's all it has. And if those tap gestures had ever worked for me, I would be sad about that. But they oh. have not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always hit them accidentally. Up. It does what? It does keep hover, which is not available to my knowledge in any third-party stylus. Oh, that's true. Oh, which uh, I don't have because my true. iPad's too old, right? I think so. Okay. Yeah, it's got to be almost the, a brand uh, new iPad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so what's hover? I'm not familiar with hover. Since I don't have a regular Apple Pencil, I don't even know what hover <laughs> that's, is. That's a feature that, uh, that I had always wanted with this. Um, that... Uh, that we first saw in Wacom tablets a uh, long time ago, where you move your stylus around without touching the surface, and it acts like a like a mouse cursor. So the the stylus will follow, or the the cursor will follow your stylus basically. And um, um, actually, I think Apple's doing a couple other things with Hover, but until I get an M series iPad. Uh, I can't play with those. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Cause that, I mean, I actually kind of like the sound of that, although I'm not um, sure if I'd ever really use it, but I like the sound of it. Well, um, if you're an artist um, or if you're doing say like, uh, like flow charts and stuff, it would be a cool thing because it lets you preview what you're about to do. Yeah. So you, you can do like a like a practice circle or whatever without touching the screen and see what it what it's going to look like uh but before you commit. Okay. So what advice would you give to someone who is looking to to 
and, and let's leave let's leave the knockoffs out for a minute. So you're looking at at the Apple Pencil, the Apple Pencil, the original, the two, or the new USB C. What would you what would you recommend? Is it better to buy the high end and spend more and then have all the features, whether you regardless of whether you use them or not? Or if you really think that you're never going to use them, is it better to go down to the uh, to the USB C? Depends on what you want to do. You want an yeah. Apple pencil. You want a stylus for your iPad so you can dot, dot, dot. Um, if it's draw, then you need to spring for the the one that works the best with your iPad. Uh, if it's if you want to write and it's it's not, you know, calligraphy or anything like that. And it's just, um, you know, uh, you go to meetings and you want to be able to take notes in meetings effectively, something like that then um i would say the the usb c is the way to go because it i mean it, you know it depends on what you want to, what what you're trying to do with it cuz some apps will also have a certain amount of pressure sensitivity built into them where you get a little bit even if you're just using something that has no technology in it at all just like a little plastic stick sure, you know like that based you, on the angle of your of yeah, yeah cuz there's some because the screen also registers a certain amount of pressure sensitivity it's a team effort with the ipad with the pencil to give you um it's like 11 d kabillion levels of sensitivity or something give or take and then um uh but the screen itself like the glass of the ipad registers a certain amount of pressure and you can do things with that that don't have anything to do with what the pencil is able to do for you so you know it depends on what you're what you're trying to do i would say yeah um my advice on it if you don't know which one to get, you you should probably be getting the USB C one. Um, honestly, artists and other professionals who need those extra features are probably going to know what they require. I'm still going to stand by the inductive charging. If you're not sure what you're going to use it for, like, and it's not ready to go, then you usually just people just patterns of behavior is just to continue to not not ever use it. Um, so I I may, I may stand by the inductive charging as being a good default feature. Um, Brittany, I I do have you on that. Um, I, I think for a lot of people, the core feature that they need for differentiation on an Apple pencil has nothing to do with pressure sensitivity or touch things. It's how do I want to charge this? Am I okay plugging it in? No, that's a pain in the butt. Okay, then you need to spend the money on the one that sticks to your iPad and charges mm-hmm. that way. You no, know, for me, going the other way, for a person who has the third-party one to upgrade, I would find somebody like Eric who can lend me one for the weekend. <laughs> and then that way I'll know if it'll work for my needs. <laughs> <laughs> and then he won't give it back, Eric. You no, know, <laughs> but it'll be okay because it's a little cheaper. So, <laughs> and, You know, I, I think I might suggest that you go, well, I said leave off the knockoffs. So I, I think I would probably recommend the the the, uh, the the Apple Pencil too, just because that way you get the full experience. Unless you are absolutely unconditionally never going to need any pressure sensitivity, and then okay, you know, then drop down. Mark, you're you're waving at me. Yeah, I, I would make a point. You know. Despite our, you know, our, you know, obviously brilliant discussion here, you know, for any listener or anybody who asks them, decide for yourself, go to an Apple store and work with both and see based on how you're using it, you know, what will fit your needs. You'll probably go in, try to use it and benchmark it, test drive it in your use case, test them side by side and then make your own decision. You know, I'm embarrassed because I don't have an Apple store that close to me. So that's not a methodology I would would have thought of. But you're right. If you have an Apple store close <clears> to you, you can go in and get a sense of of what it feels like to draw the thicker line versus the thinner line and the, the hover feature that Jeff was explaining and all. So, Or if you have a good friend like Eric who will let you <laughs> perhaps try it out on their own iPad you know, with supervision, um, you know, you can always try out, you know, see if you know someone who has one and try it out and see, 
Um, Because I think, like, I think that the pressure sensitivity piece is nice, but uh, I would be very, very tempted by the USB-C one if I was going from zero to pencil today. So, Hmm. Um, Paul in the chat room says that buy the two when it's on sale. That's his advice. That's so, also I mean, I've seen is the, coming. The, the, I mean, you know, I've seen the two come down as low as ninety dollars. Wow. Yeah. I mean, the thing I yeah. the thing I wonder about this is, aren't they like really muddling? You know, now they have three different pencils, and you know, it seems like they're just creating a complicated thing where people will just throw up their hands and go, you know, I don't think I need a pencil. Too many choices. Uh, I will say the marketing department on the naming uh, did a much, much worse job than the uh, hardware development team did. Seriously, yeah, why is it, it not the SE? Seriously. Or as quoting Craig Federighi, that's their crack marketing department. <laughs> <laughs> so is there a reason to buy the Apple Pencil 1? Yes, because you can yeah. buy an iPad 9. Because the iPad 9. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Won't, yeah. If, you're, if your button, if yeah, if your hi- iPad has a home button, the only uh, the only uh, Apple Pencil it can use is the one. Mm-hmm. Okay, and there's still like, a lot of those out in the wild. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. And you can still buy them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Barry, Barry in the chat room says Apple Pencil Two is on sale at Amazon right now for 119. Yep. So they said, wait, wait yeah, you can like also get Friday them from or... the refurbished store for quite a discount. Yeah. Yeah. The, the first gen is $89. So I, it, I got so good at me. getting eBay deals on pencils, y'all. I had like <laughs> three at one point. I have two now because I always have to have a backup. I remember. And yeah, I, mm-hmm. I got really good at it. I never paid $100 for one. Brittany, that's an interesting statement. Um, that you have more than one, so maybe it, is there room? For, How I could I possibly only have one? That would be terrifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm thinking, you know, th- that might be if you had one good one for the the artistic use cases, and then either the, the USB C one or maybe a knockoff for, you know, a back a, a temporary backup or a backup that you can use while the USB C is charging. That might not be a bad option. Yeah. No, it had never occurred to me to check eBay for for Apple pencils, and I'm holy <clears throat> forking shirt balls, people. Sixty two dollars, <laughs> fifty three eighty four, sixty five dollars, fifty five dollars sixty nine cents, um, thirty seven dollars wow. eighty eight cents. So yeah, you you can get some stupid deals. But you have to watch close because some of these are not actually Apple pencils. Mm-hmm. They're A P P E L pencils. Okay. <laughs> no, you do have to be careful and know what you're looking for. But yeah, I got it. It's oh, legally yeah. distinct. Yeah. Well, yeah. we took a long time on this particular topic, but I, th- I felt like it was important because I, t- to Ben's point, you know, the, the marketing department didn't do a great job. And I feel like the the Apple Pencil is, at least for me, it's not a misunderstood product. It's just a product that, uh, given the the two variations, I haven't really paid that much attention to. Now with three, I have to pay even more. Mm-hmm. So, but they were smart in putting the USB charging in, because then the same cable that you use to charge the iPad could charge the ca- could charge the the pencil versus versus the yeah. pencil one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> So is this just getting ready for when none of the iPads being sold have lightning? Where there, everything is AC? Mm-hmm. Well, I think which so. should be Probably. relatively soon. Well, it should be soon because they're they're still selling the nine, just yeah. because because it's the lowest end iPad you could purchase. Yeah, yeah, and it's a great iPad. I mean, yeah, it is. I've used it. I it's was okay. I was very yeah. pleased that it did not go away because much like the even though even though they don't work together, much like the the. Uh, Apple Pencil SE that they announced today. Um, it's a very, very capable device for a lot of people who do not have 
uh, very specific and very powerful needs for an iPad. Um, you know, um, I could recommend this to an awful lot of people. And at 329, it's a really nice way to get into an iPad, have it be very, re- you know, it's really reasonably priced as portable computers go and it comes in colors and uh, it works really well. I have a couple of family members who picked them up and then went, hi Kelly, I went and bought a new iPad. Can you help me with it? And they're very capable for people who are just trying to do the basics. You know, I want a little bit of web surfing. I want to read my email. I need to log into the bank. You know, I want to look up the scores for that team I like that plays the sports. And, you know, if that's, you know, and then FaceTime everybody because you get more screen with that than you do with your phone. So for a lot of people, that's a really, really nice device and will take the place of the creaky old computer in the corner that nobody likes using anyway. Believe it or not, we do have a couple of things to get to tonight. But I, again, I wanted to spend some time on this one because I think it's it's important. Uh, and I knew there were questions over why Apple decided to release this this product with this feature set and what the pros and cons are. So hopefully we've helped some people understand a little bit better. And maybe we've given them some knockoff options as well if they really just want something super cheap or as a backup. Final thought. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe. What if this is just uh, you know, an hors d'oeuvre, you know, intro and they fake everybody out who's expecting an iPad announcement this week and they announce it, you know, next week or you know, or the first or between now and the first week in November. I said it before, Christmas is coming. Yeah. Yes, yep. really, I agree with you. Christmas is coming. Yeah. I actually remember that time that they did three press releases in a week, like one day after the day. Player in the decks. Yep. Um, of course, they're not clearing the decks right now, but no, I did remember that. Yeah. I, I think Rob Jim found has, it. Yeah, uh, Jim has found his pencil, long lost pencil. <laughs> that's going in the rechargeable case. Nicely done. All right. I, I can't. Art I, in the ocean is somebody sitting on a ship with a pallet of of new iPad saying, nope, we're not close enough. Nope, you can't release it. <laughs> we haven't made it through customs. You know, we're, we're not going to fly because energy-wise it doesn't work, but we have to adjust based on ocean currents or something. We're sailing it across, so it'll be January. <laughs> Jim, well, I have it- to ask. Oh, Go ahead, Kelly, sorry. Well, isn't Guy the one that, like, we just have to find out if he bought a new one recently, and that's how we know the new one's coming out? Isn't it? Oh, isn't yeah. it him that's oh, like, I yeah. always, the minute I pull the, I finally break down and buy a new thing, then Apple comes out with the new version of the thing. So, oh, it's someone. So, oh, like, someone. Ma- yeah. So maybe we just have to find out if Guy's got a new iPad yet, and then we'll know. Yeah. And Leo Laporte always complained about that, that he would yeah. always buy something, and then a week later, you know, the replacement was announced. Yeah, Jim, I, I, I probably wouldn't buy the cheap one. I'm sorry. <laughs> what were you going to ask me, Chuck? Well, I, I've got to ask for someone who doesn't use an Apple Pencil, couldn't even. Why do I it. have a rechargeable case? What? Why do you have a recharging case? <laughs> <laughs> How can I not? Okay, that's fair. I think it, I think I think it came up on this. I think Dave and I we found I this during say, one of the shows on, a while ago. He was on Mac Voices yeah. earlier this year, I think it was, and. So it said something about like having a stand for it on the desk or something. And David comes in with, Oh no, I went on Amazon and I found a case and like, we were off to the race. Yeah. Spent Jim's money. No, I, think I, yeah, that about case. That. I remember it well. Yep. Okay. okay so and, so you know, I find that keeping it on the magnetic thing that it come, I can't it keep it off. on there. That Yeah. It comes off. Yeah. So that, that, that doesn't work for me. Hmm. So so somebody started. Maybe talking. I maybe we have just now started a new era of me actually using the pencil. Maybe <laughs> there you go. But somebody okay, started timer. Report back, report back next week, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody started timer, and let's see how quickly David can find his because he he always seems to be able to reach over and just pull things right out of like, uh, the. Air. No, <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it tonight, Dave. You talk about the case. Yeah. The recharge. Oh, I'm case. sure it's I'm sure it's buried in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the other things that I thought was interesting, and maybe 
a little less positive, unfortunately, is the fact that Goldman Sachs, and we've talked about this a little bit, but apparently it's heating up. They really want to get away from the Apple card. Like a lot. Um, they're, they're, that one of their board members has been quoted as, well, I can't quote what the alleged quote was because it's not language we use on the show. Um, <laughs> but I, I do. I, <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's get on. out of this blanking car deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look the words right out of my mouth, Mark. So, oh, this forking deal. <laughs> okay. Well, so much for family friendly. Um, no, I'm I'm curious to see. I, I mean, because we knew they were unhappy with it, but now they're they're big time unhappy, um, and they they seem to be trying to do everything they possibly can do to get out of it. They're saying it's a completely bad deal. They're saying they are losing money on Apple Card customers, which obviously means they're not making any money on Apple Card customers. But it also looks like they are trying to jettison all of their um, non commercial lending and and services is the yeah. way I've the, the articles I've read. So what does this say about Goldman? Yeah, I mean, they made a mistake, obviously. Um they uh they got out of the loan. I mean, they were doing the consumer loans, which I thought found to be interesting why they would do that because uh yeah, you're right. They're commercial they've been commercial banking for a long time. And mm-hmm. and yeah, it, it's it's kind of sad to hear this cuz I really love the Apple card and I'm hoping if it does get sold, it stays the way it is. Well, I mean, rumor has it they were the only ones who would actually deal with Apple on this. Yeah. Uh, because of a lot of the concerns that turned out to be valid. So, you know, they made a legally binding deal that did not work out for them. And, I mean, even though they may regret it, and until they can find a way to unload this, or get Apple to take it over, um, they're up a creek. What creek Mom? is are they up? <laughs> yeah. uh, the creek I cannot mention on the show. No. Yes, thank you. Um, don't, Mark, don't do it. Mark, you have some numbers. Yes. So um, I, I saw these things and I saw the quote about I didn't think there was a board member. They said it was some some unquoted unnamed manager who said we shouldn't have done this fudging deal in the first place. And, you know, looking at it, you know, and then someone else, you know, it's also been widely reported that, you know, maybe the reason is they're spending $350 per card for customer acquisition. So I did out, I did a little bit of uh, research uh, using Bing's chat GPT plugin very good saves a lot of time compared to you know last year if you wanted to use google to dig up this information and what i found is that you know on average uh, the average american has 3.84 credit cards the average credit card debt is $18,072 Ouch. now if you make an assumption and you sorry sorry that's the that's a combination of average annual spend and debt. I couldn't get any finer resolution. It's probably out there if you want to take a little bit more time to dig. But if you look at that, that averages out to forty seven hundred dollars per card. You know, um, I found another article from Forbes in two thousand that was you know talking about how great the card was and how it was working out and how they estimated that. <clears throat> Uh, Goldman was getting 1% of the transaction fees. So if you look at it from the perspective that, okay, they're they're blowing $350 on customer acquisition cost. Well, in order to break even, you know, they need to get, you know, $3,500, $3,500 of charges. So given maybe the average on the card, uh, you know, it seems like they could do that. So. Um, I'm curious on whether they are really losing money or if it's just not making as much money as they hoped. Uh, The other thing is, and this is the big unknowable, is in their rush to issue cards and spend $350 per customer, did they get in the wrong type of customers? Meaning, you know, people 
who defaults on their cards and that ultimately would cost them money. I think that is a little bit unknowable. Um, related to this, uh, yeah, there's been you know, some people you know, in commentary that talk about, well, you know, they also introduced their you know, Apple uh, you know, savings plan, which uh, I believe pays 4.1%. You know, you can get you know, short-term money market funds that pay 5.2%. So that's a percentage point difference between, you know, who knows how it's shared between Apple and Goldman. Uh, but earlier this summer, you know, there was this big news announcement that they had $10 billion of, uh, you know, money that's moved into charges. So that's like you know, right there, that's, a you know, a, a billion dollars worth of you know, uh, sorry, hundred million dollars worth of profit. So, despite all the you know histrionics and the headlines about Goldman losing money and things, I think they're a little too shrewd to get into something that would actually cost them money. I suspect this is all about they're not getting the return that they had hoped for. And with that, uh, back to you, Chuck, and the rest of the panel. Um. I will say one thing on this. Goldman has been historically purely a commercial bank. Right. Um, so they do not know quite the ins and outs of consumer lending. And with a lot of consumer cars specifically, um, a lot of them kind of depend on people not paying on time. So they can charge fees or make it harder to charge find stuff. So there are fees. Um, Apple is very straightforward and make it very easy to pay off your card. So that sort of supports my thesis. They're not making as much money as they wanted to. You know, and, and, you're, and you're on your opening, Ben, you know, FICO, Fair Isaac, FICO, public traded company. They've been in the credit card scoring business for years. Um, you know, all the information is out there. So maybe Goldman is not interpreting correctly or they're, you know, issuing cards to people who, you know, have uh, spotty, you know, credit records. Uh, you know, it just feels like, you know, there's a part of the story that we haven't heard yet. Agree. Yeah. Can we? Well, mostly what, what Ben was saying is that um, I think this says more about people who are interested and eligible and um, ultimately end up going and applying for a credit card. And uh, I think it says more about that group of people because the reason Goldman Sachs isn't making any money is because lots of people don't carry a balance. Uh, if you're someone like me, you tend to primarily use your Apple card to buy Apple stuff, which means uh, whether you have a payment plan or not, you're not paying interest on that. So Goldman Sachs is making little to no money off of me for that reason. Um, I don't use it for a lot of things. And, you know, primarily, like I said, primarily it's it's Apple stuff. So I don't get, um, you know, I'm not carrying a balance because it's, Apple hardware, so I don't have to pay interest on any of that. Uh, other things I do, uh, I pay for immediately when I do use it for something. Um, I almost always just, you know, wait a couple of days to make sure it shows up correctly on the card. Like, yes, that's the amount. Yes, that's where it was charged. And then I log in and go pay it off because I don't carry a balance on that card. So, like, Goldman is never going to make money on me. I am a terrible, terrible credit card customer. Um, I think the Apple card is great because. It's right there in the wallet. It's really easy to use. I can set it up with Apple Pay. And it's like somehow it's even faster when I use my car, you know, my Apple card with the Apple Pay. So there's like there's no avenue for Goldman in that. And I think this is probably part of their larger because they had another credit card too, uh, another consumer one, like GM or something, I think it was. Yeah. Um yeah. like they have another one that that for whatever reason isn't working out for them. So like I can understand why they want to get out of consumer credit because I kind of feel like given what I know of uh, people who have Apple cards, like, first of all, you can't even get one if you don't have an iPhone, number one. Um, and then you have to have pretty good credit in order to get one. Uh, if you have an iPhone, you know, you have to have an iPhone and also good credit and sit down and open the wallet app and have it 
you know, and, and go in there and look and go, yes, I would like an Apple card. Can you give me one? And then fill out the stuff on your phone and then wait for it to go and come back and say that you're approved. So like, it's a pretty self-selecting group. And I think a lot of people who have one aren't like, yeah, you know, I'm really excited about paying 30% on carrying a balance <laughs> on a card. So they don't do it, you know? So I think, um, you know, there's, there's probably a lot of that too, because, you know, for me, it's great. But it, you know, I'm not, you know, when, when you're not a person who pays a bunch of fees or carries a bunch of balance or anything like that, then you're a terrible customer for them. Brian? I was just going to add that. Yeah, definitely. For folks who pay their balances off full, uh, Goldman Sachs isn't making you know, hardly any money off the cargo holder, except for a few interesting pieces. Uh, one is uh, by using um, the card itself, there's obviously credit card uh, merchant fees that get passed along. And then, um, you know, also you think about, I, and I'm not sure with Apple specifically, some of the, maybe the data, the data gathering on what your purchases might be. I'm not, I actually don't remember if that's something that's protected from Apple or not. I don't know. I, I mean, that's, that was always one of the, one of the hallmarks I think of this, but I'm not sure given that it's a partner with Goldman, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how that would work. Sorry, I don't understand. Obviously, Goldman knows all the transactions, but are you are you talking about uh, sharing that transaction data back to Apple, Brian? Yeah, just the just the information sharing. Why would so, Apple want it? Playing devil's advocate. I think, Mark. I'll answer that. I I think that Apple wants everything they can find out about their customers. They just don't sell it. They use it for their own intelligence, but I don't. But yeah, like maybe we should make a new Apple Pencil that doesn't cost as much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it, they'd be foolish not to because they already have a, an incredible amount of information. If if you live in the Apple ecosystem, because you've given your a credit card for your apps and for your music, and for any other Apple services you you have. Next time on Mac Voices, we wrap up our conversation about Goldman Sachs and Apple and then take a look at a costly dating option that just might be worth it. That's next time on Mac Voices. I'm Chuck Joyner. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices each month. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.